It took them a while to get it going today, but my God, was it a nice seventh inning for the Toronto Blue Jays as they beat the Orioles and avoid the sweep. Winning 6-1 this afternoon at Rogers Center, a jam-packed about 41,000 there at Rogers Center this afternoon. And with the, with the win, the Blue Jays are now 62-54 and 54 on the year. And the question everybody is going to have is, is that seventh inning now going to propel this team forward? Well, the, question, the answer I have for you is, we shall wait and see. Th that's all I got for you. But let's break down this puppy. And through the first six innings, both starting pitchers, Austin Voth, 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 and Ross Stripling were absolutely stellar. Ross Stripling had a perfect game into the seventh until Cedric Mullins drops a little, no, it wasn't a blooper, but it was a soft single to center field for a base hit. And then he gets the next guy out, Mullins into the second base, but a great wherewithal from Vladdy, right? Gets the, gets the hard hit ball to him. And then he turns to fire to second, doesn't have the ball, but picks it up and has the wherewithal, like I said, to go to first base, flip it to Stripling, a nice flip right to the glove, easy one, you get the out there. Yeah, you wanted the double play, you probably would have had the double play, but you get the one out, you get the sure out there. Then they go to the bullpen and bring out Jimmy Garcia. And some people, the common Jays fan, be like, why, why would they take him out? He's going to let one hit. Look, look, one, it's third time through the order. Second of all, Ryan Mountcastle going into today is three for five against Ross Stripling in his career with two home runs. You do not want to face him for a third time today. And Jimmy Garcia gets him a soft ground at the shortstop. And can we talk about the barehanded play from Bo? Woo -hoo! That was sexy. And he got two out. Mullins at third base. Big at bat here for Austin Hayes. And Jimmy, or Jimmy Garcia strikes him out to end the top of the seventh inning. Massive, massive job there from Jimmy Garcia. And then the bottom half of the set. Teoscar Hernandez hits a bloop single, drops in. I believe it was a one-out single. Then they start the runner. Teo takes off for second. Bo rips one into, well, it was left center field on the ground for a base hit. Teo goes to third. Runners on the corners with less than two out. And I was sitting here watching this game, right? When that happened, I'm looking up and I'm like, a guy in third with less than two out. Please! Let something good happen here for the Blue Jays. Then Brendan Hyde. I do not know why. But he goes to the bullpen. To bring in the lefty. And people will be like, well, he was facing Roy Mel Tapia. Yeah, but J or any fan, whoever's here. Jay fan, Yankee fan, Oriole fan, whatever. The Jays just go to their bench at that point. Like, you bring in the lefty. And did he not realize who was on the bench? Because they go to the lefty. And out comes George Springer. I'm sorry, but if I'm Brandon Hyde, I'd rather the righty face uh, Rymel Tapia. Or bring in another righty to face Rymel Tapia. But no, they go to the lefty. All right, Josh Snyder's like, okay, thank you. George, come on, buddy. Go up to bat. <laughs> and George is like, I'm going to feast on this guy. And he ripped one foul, right? It, it was just a great at bat from George Springer. And he was down 0-2. And he gets a fastball up in the zone, right? Because you think about the at-bat. The second pitch he threw was the off-speed, the curveball, right? And George pulled it hard and ripped it foul. And if you're the pitcher, you're like, damn, he was all over my fa uh, all over my curveball. I'm going to throw him the fastball. Well, he does. And Springer punches it into center field for a base hit. In comes Teoscar Hernandez. And the Blue Jays have a lead. And they score a run. And they have three consecutive hits. What is happening? We were so excited. Right? It's just a beautiful thing. And then, Santiago Espinal comes up. A guy who went three for three yesterday, albeit didn't hit a ball out of the infield. But that's okay. And then he comes up and gets a fastball up in the zone. He drills it to right center field. And a one hops the wall. In comes Bo Bichette. George Springer high tailing around first. He's rounding second. He's rounding third. He comes flying head first into the plate. And he slides in safely. He is pumped. And the Jays have a 3 nothing lead. They have four consecutive hits. What is going on? It's beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. And it's 3-0 Toronto. But they weren't done. Danny Jansen then walks on four pitches. 
And then Lourdes, uh, well, I guess then, uh, what happened after that? Chapman comes up, and he gets hit by a pitch. That's to load the bases for Vlad. And Vlad hits a ground ball a third. They go home with it. You know, kind of the smart play there. You could have gone the double play, but if you don't get that double play, that sure run crosses the, to make it 4 nothing. So they go home, get the second out, and it's still 3 nothing. The bases are loaded for Lourdes Gurriel Jr. And Gurriel puts him in a really nice hit bat and doesn't get over anxious, doesn't try to do too much because his numbers with the bases loaded are great. Takes the walk, a big time walk for Gurriel. It's three and two, or sorry, it was a three and one count. And I'm watching the game, right? It's a three one count. I'm like, he's going to get a fastball here. You, you can't throw three one and hope the guy he chases. Because if he doesn't, you're getting a run. So Gurriel knows that. Looks fastball, gets a fastball just off the plate, but he was looking for it. And it was a ball four. Great at bat from Lourdes Gurriel, scoring Danny Jansen. Jay's now up their lead. It's now four nothing. But they weren't done. Alejandro Kirk comes up, getting to, getting to a nice hitter's count. I believe it was a 3-1 count. And he drills one to left field, and it goes off the, was off the wall or one hops the wall. Either, it was one hop the wall because it goes over the guy uh, in left field coming back. And in comes Vladdy, in comes Chap, and the Jays lead it 6-0. Like, what is happening here? 11 guys go to the plate in that inning, and the Jays take on a 6 spot. It's insane. Now, let me go to the top of the eighth inning. Robinson Chirinos hits a, it's an RBI single, albeit, you know, there were a lot of ground balls against Zach Pop. A couple of fine holes. This one was a comeback. The goes off his glove, knocks his glove off, and that's how the run scores. Nothing crazy there. And you win the ball game 6-1. Much needed for this team. But as I said off the top, you know, is this a sign of things to come now? Well, we'll wait and see. I, I, I. Look, it's a great sign here. Remember when the Jays' offense was struggling mightily earlier in the year and they had that game against the St. Louis Cardinals where they just started clicking and were like, whoa, is this a sign? And it was a sign because they clipped in all cylinders after that. I really hope this is the time because you were heading to the Bronx for four. You got the, uh, the, the Red Sox for three at Fenway. And then you have like the Cubs, the Pirates, like not these not so great teams after that. So if you're clicking, going into these two tough road series... Who knows it'll happen. But all we have to do is go out there and watch. And just like I, like I told you guys yesterday, like I brought the question, why do I care so much? Well, it's because then I see games like this and I'm like, oh, oh, oh yay. That's why I watch this game. That's why I care. But uh, offensively, look, what, not the greatest game. Through six innings, they got nothing going. Bo Bichette gets the RBI, the leadoff double in one inning, and Tapia flies out to left, Espinal infield fly, and uh, just nothing doing. Brutal, 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 brutal piece of hitting, right? But team goes, he gets eight hits total, not great. Four strikeouts, so he didn't strike out very much, and he walked three times, not bad. Bo Bichette went two for four in the game with a run scored. You love to see it. And Espy went two for four with a couple of RBIs. Quietly, he's been putting a really good last five or six games together. So it's really nice to see, especially when your number eight hitter is going to start hitting like that. You need it. You really, really do. Uh, Ross Stripling, you know, we can talk about the offense all day long. He was absolutely outstanding. Six and a third, one hit, seven strikeouts, doesn't walk a guy. The man had a perfect game through six. He was absolutely outstanding. His, his curveball was nuts. His changeup was on fire. He was using his fastball in fantastic spots. He was just dialing it up. He was ready to go out there and pitch for these guys today. And it was beautiful. He had no run support. Didn't matter. He was stellar. Heck of a job for Ross Stripling. Much needed for this team. But uh, really, really nice job. Jimmy Garcia, look, all went two-thirds of an inning. Going to go unnoticed. But he was outstanding. Two-thirds of an inning. Got the, got the strikeout. Look. He got Austin Hayes and Ryan Mountcastle in, in a big spot with a guy at second and less than two out. Heck of a job for Jimmy Garcia. Zach Pop went in and he allowed three hits. Like I said, all ground balls. One was a little chopper up the middle that find a hole. And uh, one, the other one was a comeback and went off his glove. And he lost his glove, so there was no play there. And then one was a nice hit from Odor, but nothing else. So he didn't really have a bad out. He gave up a run, unfortunately. I think it's his first run as a Blue Jay allowed. Not too bad for Zach Pop. And David Phelps with a clean ninth inning. Went an inning. No base runners. Couple strikeouts for him. Now let's turn our focus. And if Yankee fans are late are here late in this video, uh, first off, thank you very much for coming on and, and watching this this whole video. But we all know what's happening next. We all know what's happening starting tomorrow. The Jays are on their way to New York to the Bronx for a four gamer against the against the Yankees. Jose Barrios gets the ball in Game One. Oh God, oh God! 
Frankie Montas gets the ball for the Yankees in game one. That's a 7.05 first pitch tomorrow. Game two is Kevin Gosman against Jamison Tyone. That's a 7.05 first pitch there on Friday night. And then Saturday afternoon, Mitch White, because Kikuchi's already been said that he's going to the pen. So Mitch White's getting the ball in game three on Saturday afternoon versus Garrett Coles. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. That's a 105 first pitch. And then the finale is Alec Mano versus Nestor Cortez earlier in the year. Everyone's talking about Cy Young for these two guys. Now they're going to be facing off in the finale on Sunday afternoon at 135 at Yankee Stadium. Going to be a wild one. It always is when there's a four-gamer at Yankee Stadium late in the season. We saw it last year. We've seen it in years past. And here we go again. What's going to happen? We'll wait and see. All right, Chase fans. You know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the game this afternoon, why? Because it was a W. Smack the like button. Do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already. Comment down below, guys, your thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from today's game for the Toronto Blue Jays? The Twitter link is down below. So follow up. Send me a DM to that great stuff. The Instagram link is also down below. So follow up there if you guys have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys. Jays edition, of course. Tomorrow night. Game one, Jays, Yankees, at, at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Jose Barrios on the road. Recipe for a disaster, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Frankie Montas gets the ball for the Yankees in game one tomorrow night. 705 first pitch there. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the ball game this afternoon. We'll talk to you guys then.